Hello friends and welcome to our channel. Today we're going back to 1992 on one of the craziest financial stories ever. When one investor was able to single-handedly cause the British currency to collapse. Yes, we are talking about George Soros and the day he broke the Bank of England. Stick around because this story has it all. High stakes gambling, questionable morals, and more twists than a Bond movie. Let's set the scene. It's September 1992 and the UK is in trouble. Their currency, the British pound, has been under pressure for months as investors lose faith in the government's ability to manage the economy. Inflation is skyrocketing and interest rates are through the roof as the country sinks deeper into recession. The pressure has been building for years but now a crisis is brewing. Enter our protagonist, George Soros. Soros made his first billion as a hedge fund manager, known for his ability to spot economic weaknesses before others. By 1992, he was already a legend on Wall Street, but nothing could prepare him or the Bank of England for what was about to go down. With Britain on the brink, Soros smells blood in the water and devises a plan to short the pound that will go down in history as one of the biggest financial gambles ever. But was it just smart investing? Or was there an element of malice towards the UK? We'll get to that slippery slope debate later. The stage is set, and now it's time to break it down position by position, like a game of 4D chess. Soros' hedge fund, Quantum Fund, quietly starts shorting the British currency on a massive scale. For those of you not up on your financial terms, shorting means you're betting the value of something will go down. By borrowing pounds from brokers and immediately selling them, Soros would profit big time if Sterling took a nosedive. Slowly but surely, over the summer, Quantum's short position against the pound grows to an eye-watering $10 billion, an amount that dwarfed even the reserves of the Bank of England. Meanwhile, in the halls of power, the cabinet is in chaos as one minister after another resigns in protest of the failing economic strategy. Public opinion of the government sinks to new lows as food prices soar and factories close their doors. The central bank is struggling to defend the pound's exchange rate, but their arsenal is running low. All while Soros watches and waits for the kill shot, his head start allowing Quantum to build an almost untouchable short position. The night of September 15th arrives, codenamed Black Wednesday and the tension in the financial world is palpable. At the closing bell in New York, traders who spent the day glued to their screens finally learn Soros's hand. He wants out of all his short pound positions immediately. It's a massive sell order no broker wants to be left holding, so they start unloading their own long positions to raise the cash. A chain reaction begins, and within moments, hundreds of millions of pounds are changing hands as the herd mentality kicks in. Overnight, the currency drops a startling 2%. The panic spreads across the Atlantic, and when London markets open the next morning, mayhem ensues. Investors are scrambling to bail as the pound plunges further, falling through support level after support level. Traders report chaos on the floors, brokers scrambling to find buyers, and interbank lending grinding to a halt. By midday, sterling has collapsed 5%, an alarming decline that threatens to spiral out of control. The bank knows they have to act decisively to restore order, but their options are dwindling fast. In a desperate attempt to draw a line in the sand, the Chancellor raises UK interest rates a staggering 3% to 15%, an unprecedented and monstrous hike that slams the brakes on the economy. But it's not enough. With an estimated $10 billion short position stacked against them, no amount of interest rate juice can stop the Soros tsunami. The Prime Minister and her advisors huddle in crisis meetings, each minute bringing new lows for the battered pound. By the end of the day, they are left with only one choice. Withdraw from the exchange rate mechanism and suspend the currency from fixed trading bands within the ERM. In the historic announcement, the Bank of England admits defeat at the hands of what some called the greatest speculator of all time. When the closing bell sounds, the pound stands a full 10% weaker as untold billions evaporate from the FTSE. London traders dump champagne 
as George Soros and his quantum investors uncork multi-billion dollar profits from their malign short bets. But was Soros just a lucky gambler? Or had the UK brought this doom upon themselves? The debate raged for years as academics and journalists picked over the smoldering ruins. Supporters point to Soros' foresight in predicting obvious economic weaknesses, but critics accuse him of deliberately exacerbating the crisis. After all, his short position was so massive that some estimates say he single-handedly accounted for a third of all pounds traded that day. The fact that he once wrote, My success has made me an object of envy and even hatred doesn't help absolve accusations of malice. As insane as it sounds, one man with perfect timing really was able to shatter a country's currency in a single day. It shows the outsized influence speculation can have, for better or worse. Until next time, keep your eyes peeled for the next market mania, and maybe you too can break the bank. Thanks for watching, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.